Good morning. I have the privilege of having Ella join me this morning to give the announcements. It's so nice to have our young people participating in church, and certainly we want them to enjoy the experience. We want to welcome all of you to Sahalis today, and anybody who is visiting from out of town, we're glad to have you with us this morning, and we hope that you are richly blessed by the service here today. If you are a visitor, you might not be aware that today is children's church. Well, we're all God's children, so it's church for all of us. But if you wonder about the little different format, it's because it's focused on the children today. Okay, Ella has an announcement now. The fall work beat is on Sunday, October 4, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Many hands make that work. Amen, and we have seen that up on the screen there, too. You can bring all your equipment and come and be part of that, either work inside or outside. Today we are blessed to have Dale Anderson. You've heard his beautiful m music this morning as he is joining in uh, providing the music that we have for our service. He has been here and done things in the past, and we want to thank you, Dale, for joining us today. We also today have the opportunity to have the first reading for making uh, Pastor Enrique an elder of this church, as he has been ordained in other places, but uh, we need to be able to make him an elder of this church. So today is the first reading. There's not a vote on that, but just letting you know, next week will be the actual voting in him as an elder of this church. Tithes and offerings are collected at the back. Children's offering is collected at the front before and after the service. And today's offering is for disaster, fire relief. That's correct. And we had somebody come bring some children's offerings so far, and you can come any time during the service since the children don't go around anymore and collect the offering. Uh, now I invite you to stand for the call to worship. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as, so, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he, with, then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. That was from Acts 3, 2 to 8 from the NIV. For those of you that are able to kneel, if you would kneel now for the prayer that David would give. Dear Lord, thank you that I could see all these beautiful people today. And for the people who weren't able to come today, we will pray for them. Also, please pray. Bless everyone here, including the speaker. Amen.
Shabbat Shalom. Sorry, wrong language. Happy Sabbath. It's so good to see you here. You know, I love modern technology here. You guys have these. They're, I heard they call glasses. I'm going to put them on because I've been having some problem. I cannot see you very well. There you go. I see so many beautiful faces here, starting with our brother over here. Okay. It's good to see you. Hey, you know this Sabbath? I'm here because they invited me. I hope that's okay. This Sabbath is a very special Sabbath. You want to know why? You don't want to know. You want to know why? Because today... We're going to be talking about having a connection with Jesus. You know, last Sabbath, we asked some of you to draw some questions. And I would like to show you, we, we did that at the family Sabbath school. So I would like to show you some of those pictures and some of the questions that we got some. Oh, here we go. And he says, can you see that? How did you make all the colorful flowers? So this question is being addressed to Jesus. So let me ask you, if you had the opportunity to ask a question to Jesus, what would that be? So this is the first one. How do you make all the colorful flowers? Do you know the answer? <laughs> I know that Jesus has the answer. Let's go to the next one. He says, I'll tell you something. I'll go faster than them. But I think I haven't tried that, and I won't do that right now. Let's go to the other question. I wonder how many types of dogs there are. I really like this one, and I think Nathan, Nathan, are you here? There you go, Nathan. I really like this one over here. That's my favorite. Good job. All of them are pretty. I like that one in specific more, though. Thank you for that question. I wonder that one, too. What is this one? I know that you imagine this one, too. What is heaven like? Have you, have you asked yourself that question? What is heaven like? I don't know who did this one, but I'm imagining the kingdom of God some fields, maybe the, the, the gold roads. I like that one. One more. Oh, I think there's more than one. Mm. Can you see that one? Why do you allow Satan and his angels to come the question mark? I don't know. <laughs> Why something something. I asked that one myself too. And I think there's one more, right? Two more. Thank you. Where are the eight? That's a tough one. I know that uh, some people believe in the, that the earth's flat, so that's the answer for them, I guess. But we believe that there's a universe and there's more than that, right? Where are the ages of the universe? I don't know. We'll, we would need to ask Jesus for that one too. Here's the last one, and I want to finish with this one. I don't know, you, I, I don't think you can see, but on the top it says, God is good. God is good. Amen. Through this worship, you know, through my life, I remember one story in specific. John and I, we were walking and we saw a layman and by the grace of God, we were able to heal him. But you know, we were able to do that because our connection with Jesus. And so throughout this service, I hope that you're also able to find a connection with Jesus.
so glad we finally get to come home and rest. No more. Oh, this has been a stressful few months, hasn't it, guys? Yeah. We've really been a through great a lot. Time. Kean's had a great time. He loves it when all the family gets to be together. And that's one thing that COVID definitely did, right? Gave us some together time. Way too much together time. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys think of a really just focus on the negative? And I'd like to think of some good things. Ronan, what's something that God has done for you? Uh, let us go back to school. Yeah, we got to go back to school in person. That was also a blessing to me because I wouldn't have a job if we didn't. That we are able to see our friends and family again. Yes, getting to see our friends and family, that's really important. I know that we really missed them and they missed us too. Babe, what's something that happened to you that was a blessing? I got to spend a lot of outdoor times with you guys. Yeah, we spent a lot of time a lot because the weather was nice. And sleep on And play with our dogs. Oh, we had a, a pretty good summer, I think, if we really think about all of the blessings that God gave us. But this week, it was long, guys. I'm just happy that we get to finally be home. Does anyone know what time it is? Babe, do you know what time it is? Time for you to buy a watch. Oh, do you know? What time is it? Almost eight. Almost eight. So it's almost the Sabbath. We should start our family worship. You know, I think that it's good that we're focusing on all of the miracles and promises and good things that God has done for us. So I think we should continue that into our worship tonight. I'm going to get our Bible. Oh, no technology right now. We're going to read out of God's word. All right. Let's read from Acts 3, starting with verse 1. Sindel, will you start? Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain certain man lame from his mother's womb has was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms and from those who entered the temple what does it mean to ask alms do you guys know what that means M ask for money yeah he was begging wasn't he he was sitting outside the temple hoping that somebody with money would come along and give it to him do you think it, do you think people gave him money very often, Ronan? Uh, probably not. Yeah, probably not. If he was there every day, people probably got used to seeing him there and would just walk right on by. Let's see. So who seeing and fixing his eyes on him with John and Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and he lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them. And all the people saw him walking and praising God when they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Isn't that an amazing thing to have happened? What a great miracle that we get to read about. I wish we had that connection with God. I wish we had that connection with God, too. I wish we could Zoom with God. Can you do that? Yes, we can. We can? Well, yeah. I've got to see this happen. Ronan, can you set up a Zoom with Jesus? Yeah. 
I don't know. I'm not sure this is going to work. I've never had a Zoom call with Jesus. I've had a Zoom call with your teachers before. <gasps> Look! Who's that? It's Jesus. We're on a Zoom call with Jesus. Keen, come Zoom check family. this out. How are you doing? Happy Sabbath. Hi, Kian. How are you doing? This is amazing. I didn't even know we could do this, guys. Oh, Jesus, since we have you on a Zoom call, we have some important questions for you. Ronan, what question do you have? I know it's amazing, right? In heaven, the streets will be paved with gold. And it's even going to be transparent so you can see through them. In Revelation 21, 21, it says that they'll be paved in gold. It's going to be amazing. That sounds amazing. Babe, what you, questions do you have for Jesus? Jesus, how big was Goliath? Wow, that's a great question. Goliath was over nine feet tall. We always talk about the height of Goliath, but we forget about the power of David. Mm. And he was much smaller. That's true, Jesus. That's true. Thank you for reminding us of that. Those are important things. Sindel, I see you have a question. Why did you forgive all the sinners? Well, the sinners are all my children. I came into the world, not only did we create each person, each one of you, in God's image, but I came to the world so that each of you could have an opportunity to choose me as your Lord and Savior. I love each one of you. Each one of you are my children. Each one of you are very, very valuable. We tend to forget that, don't we, Jesus? We forget that we are your children sometimes. So, Jesus, my question for you is how can we build a closer connection with you? We want to be close to you. That's another great question. Well, first of all, you've already done it this, this Sabbath evening. You had a worship time. You opened up the Bible and you were reading. Those are my words to share with my people so that I can have direct communication. Also, you're asking that connection. You're wanting that connection. And I've always wanted that connection with you. Thank you so much for reaching out to me this evening. Well, Jesus, this has been absolutely amazing having a Zoom call with you. I, I've got to go and tell people about this, that they can just, we usually connect with you is through prayer, and we'll continue to do that too, Jesus. So thank you for always being there for us. Bye-bye. I Bye. love you. Hope to see you very soon, face-to-face. -face. Don't lose that connection. You know, it's interesting. I've had a lot of questions this week. One of the questions was from Cody from the Shehala Seventh Avenue Church. And Cody's question was, is it okay to eat grasshoppers and honey like John the Baptist? Wow, Cody, what a great question. You know, it'd probably be okay to eat grasshoppers and honey, but first I think you ought to talk to your parents and see what they say. If you have another great question, they're asking, the question was, the children of Israel, they had manna. Did the animals also have manna? Well, you know, the animals had grass in the field, but I also said I will supply all the needs, even to the animals. Well, I want to come see you face to face. Happy Sabbath.
Are you happy to be here? Have you had a connection with Jesus this week? How did you do it? Hmm? How did you do it? Through prayer. Prayer. What else? What else? What else am I holding? What about Lindley? Did she read her Bible too? Wow. You know what? Let's unpack this story a little more. Let's go to Acts chapter 3. We saw the apostle Peter and John and the lame man. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Acts chapter 3. Let's go to verse 1 and see what God's word says. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now God's word says, Now Peter and John went up to the temple at an hour of prayer, the ninth hour. What stands out? The hour of sacrifice. Jesus had already given the sacrifice, but it was the hour of prayer. And it was the ninth hour. Do you remember anything else with the ninth hour? Remember when Jesus said, it is finished? What hour was that? That was the ninth hour. Sometimes we got to read and make sure to go slowly, not to miss anything. Verse 2 of chapter 3. And a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, and, they laid, and he laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Why was the temple called beautiful? The temple had gates that were 75 feet high. They were made of Corinthian brass, so they shone. It was a double gate with a double door, and it was beautiful. And they laid them, Nathan, they laid them down there, because often when people come to church, they're more giving. Let's keep reading. To ask for alms. What is alms? To ask for financial means to make it. He was lame, so he couldn't walk. So he's asking for alms or money from those who enter the temple. So seeing Peter and John about ready to go into the temple, they asked for alms. He said, can I have some alms? Now, interesting, we see people of need now on the street, do we not? And often... If we're not going to give to them, we often do what? We look the other way. We don't want to make eye contact with them. But what does Peter and John say? Verse 4, and fixing his eyes on him, John and Peter said, look at us. Look at us. So the lame man gave his attention, expecting to receive something from them. He was asking for what? He was asking for money. Something to get him to the next day. Look at us. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Isn't that how God works? He says, bring your request to me. And often what we ask is smaller than he's willing to give us. Meaning we should ask for more. He often meets our needs by not what we ask for, but what we need. The money would only get him by to the next day. But what does God want to do? Peter and John said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He was physically healed at that very moment. We saw it here on the platform today. He was healed, he stood up, and he walked. But there was more. Did you miss it? In the name of Jesus Christ, they took him by the hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet, his ankles, his bones, they strengthened up. And he began walking and leaping and praising God. And where did he walk into? Did you, do you miss it? Did he run into the city? Where did he walk into? He entered the temple with them together, walking and leap for the day, God's church, walking and leaping with joy and praising God. I'm so glad I get to come to church today. I get to worship God in heaven. Or did we come to church because we felt like we had to? 
Or do maybe we came to the church for the wrong reasons. But don't miss it. What we're asking for and what Jesus is ready to give us may be different things. But he's going to give us what we need and so much more. He was physically healed, the lame man. And now he was spiritually healed as they entered the temple at a time of prayer to worship. And all the people saw, it says in verse 9, him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging for alms at the beautiful temple gate. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. Someday the real Jesus is going to come. And he's going to give you a crown. A crown of gold. Real gold. Just like the streets in heaven. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm going to read you a verse and listen to the words. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. As we close, don't miss this. Finally, there is laid up for me, put your name in there, laid up for me, the crown of righteousness. Whose righteousness? Jesus' righteousness. A crown of Jesus' righteousness. He wore our, our crown on the cross that ninth hour. Remember what our crown was? Thorns. Painful thorns. Laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me, put your name in there, that day, and not only to me, but to all, all who have loved his appearing. So today, for Children's Church, don't miss the point. The point is we need to have a connection with Jesus. I know masks make it difficult, I know Zoom meetings aren't as personal. I know there's a lot of things going on, but it really comes down to this. I came to church today to have a connection with Jesus. All right, well, I'm going to ask the Apostle Peter to come up and have a closing prayer for us. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Let us pray. Father, I know it's hard to connect with you sometimes. It's not because of you. It's because of us. Our lives can become busy. With many things that are distracting you, distracting us from you. It's hard to connect because sometimes we might not find the time. Sometimes we might not make it a priority. But God, we ask and we seek and we're knocking. Yes. 